Hello everyone, Gary Laubach, Mike Joseph. We are behind the microphone and we're getting ready for the next ball game for the Lafayette Leopards. It will be at home. It will be against a very good Monmouth football team. Monmouth coached by the only coach they've ever had. Kevin Callahan is in his 31st year as the head coach. They're a good ball club, a very talented ball club. But let's take a look back a little bit, Mike. I think we can gloat a little bit about the Columbia game. Yeah, I think the, boy, the Leopards put everything together. Mm -hmm. Uh, offense, defense, I think they did well on special teams. I think they probably should have think they should have had a couple more touchdowns on the board, uh, a couple wasted opportunities. But, you know, I, the defense, I don't know who stands out a little less. The defense played so well. Mm -hmm. But then you look at the offense, and who do you kind of pin that win on? It was a team win overall. Great running from Jamar Curtis. You and I were completely and utterly impressed by them. But you got to talk about the offensive line when you do that. Mm -hmm. Um, I thought they were really good. And then defensively, Marco stepped up and, and basically shut their offense down when they needed to. Special teams, too. They, uh, they stepped up. We got a, a good field goal in the ball game. Uh, I think as long as if they start catching punch, you'll be uh, ecstatic. <laughs> yeah, and they just a few things they need to do, obviously, a little bit better. Um, they need to convert everything into points. Everything's got to be points. You get the ball down inside the 25-yard line, that has to be points for Lafayette. It hasn't been in the last few years. Um, but, yeah, I thought overall the special teams were pretty good. If we can get something out of the return game, I think that's even going to help us. We're going to talk a lot on Inside the Huddle this week about the secondary and creating opportunities mm -hmm. for the offense. I, I don't know if we're an 85-yard type of offense, 10 plays, 85 yards, but if we get short fields, we've been able to convert – you know, and you look back at the record, Lafayette's the first time they're 2-1 and one, mm -hmm. and since, I believe, 2012 when they were 3-0. and oh. So it's been a while. That's absolutely correct. 2012, they were 3-0. and oh. They're looking for their first winning season. It's certainly a big step forward. It would be a win over this Monmouth ball club. Monmouth comes in 1-2, and two, but I think the record is a little, a little shady. They lost to Florida Atlantic, no surprise there. Uh, and then they lost last week to Campbell, but they had a lead in that ball game and, and gave it up. They give up a lot of points. They score a lot of points. <laughs> yeah, they, they were up, I think, 23-7, 24-7 in that game, and then Campbell came back, and Campbell did it through the air. Mm -hmm. So the question mark, if there is any, uh, with 20 starting seniors and graduate students, is can they cover in the secondary, and can they bring the pressure? They can sack you. They can get upfield. Lafayette's going to be tested again up front, going to have to protect the quarterback. I think Lafayette may need to shorten this game, similar to the way they did Duke, similar, uh, similar to that and limiting the possessions a little bit. But again, Dean denoble has been impressive. He's a kid that can run it. He can get out of traffic. He's always got his eyes downfield. And if we can run the football like we've done, and I'm not saying for 150 yards, right. but if we can control the line of scrimmage and run the football, Lafayette's going to win football game. Monmouth has a good win over Towson. That has to be impressive. They beat them 42-23, to as I mentioned. They don't have problems scoring points. 31 points a ball game this club puts up. All right, let's talk about some of the individual talent because it is pretty awesome when you look at the numbers. Their running back is Jaden Sheridan. Jaden Sheridan led the FCS last year in rushing. He rushed for 1,722 yards, uh, which is 8.4 yards per carry. Uh, and I'm sure he is on some, uh, some watch lists for the NFL. Oh, absolutely. He's explosive. He really is explosive. You can't give him a big – a big seam to run through because he will run through you like Jamar does and run right into the end zone. He is that fast and he's that explosive. And that's what you're looking for. All quarterbacks and, and offensive coordinators now just talks about uh, explosive plays. How many, how many plus 20 yard plays mm -hmm. did we have? Mm -hmm. They get those plays out of the running game, which is uh, so is Lafayette going to commit more guys to the box? Are they going to have to have eight and nine in the box? open things up to the outside. That's what I think they're going to have to do early. The most important down, if you're watching at home, is first down. If, the, if they are not in second and long, second and nine, second and eight, second and 12, it's going to be a long game for Lafayette. So Lafayette wants them to throw the ball, so who's going to do that? Well, it's a familiar face, Marquez McCray, who played last year for Sacred Heart against Lafayette, had a pretty good ball game, 22 for 40, did not throw an interception. But there's a big but here, and that's the fact that they didn't score any points. <laughs> no, they didn't score any points. And, and a team that won the NEC three times in a row, and he led them to all of those championships, he's, he's just – he's, again, he's an explosive guy. I don't think he wants to run as much as he used to when he was younger. He wants to stand back there, find people, and throw the ball. But he only completes about 60% of his passes. So 
if you can get to him and get the pressure that we got last week, I think he will throw it into traffic. That's why I think the takeaways are huge. So um, I think they're going to come out and run the football. Just run it right down our throats. Mike said how many people they have back, how many older people on the roster. Well, their top two wide receivers are back, Dimir Miller and Asante Kearney. They're both back. They have 92 catches between them so far in just three ball games. So they will indeed test our secondary. How about our offense? Well, this team gives up 37 points a game. Mm -hmm. They give up over 400 uh, yards of offense to the opponent. So obviously, what do you think, a shootout? Are we looking at a shootout here? <laughs> well, I don't think Lafayette wants to get into a shootout. I don't think we have the offensive explosiveness that, say, they do. So that's why I believe they're going to have to shorten this football game a little bit. So they've been up and down, Mom. But the question is, can they put a whole game together? I'm sure that's what Coach Callahan's looking for. Let's put an entire game together as well. And for them, it starts with the running game. And then all that play action will come off of that. That's where it's going to be deadly is when you can get single coverage in the secondary, adding a guy to the box. So can we get home with the pass rush? Can we do those type of things? Um, with four, do we have to add five? Do we have to add six? Last week we added five, six, and seven. It was the most blitzing I think I've seen Lafayette do uh, and get home uh, in the last couple of years. I think they're going to have to continue to do that. One would think, watching uh, the ball game on Saturday, that yeah. nobody loves blitzing more than our, <laughs> our linebackers. They just get after it. Yeah. And uh, they just could not block them on Saturday. No, and, and they're that good. And what that does is it opens things up for freshmen like Jalen Joseph. Um, and Michael Vaughn those type of guys if they get one-on-one -on -one, and that's what that when you bring five and six you get one-on-one so you get a free rusher like we did so many times last week or you get one-on-ones and, and that's where the D-line coach says someone's got to win so when you're five on five and someone wins you can get home so Lafayette has had to add an extra guy unlike they did last year um, they didn't really have they could rush with four they could rush with three and Malik would get home when you have to add an extra guy it puts a little pressure on the secondary and I think uh, that's what uh, Lafayette will attempt to do. They can shut down the run, hopefully, then the, sec the uh, secondary will have a, a busy day, but maybe not as difficult as stopping that running game. It should be a really good football game, on, and a very important one psychologically for both these teams. Lafayette looking at Bucknell the following yeah. week to get themselves into the Patriot League. So uh, we'll be here. We want and always invite you to join us. It's a 3.30 start on Saturday right here at Fisher Stadium. Mike and I will be behind the mic. Thanks for joining us.